Well, happy sunshine, guys. We're going to continue on here. We've made it through page 40, pretty much. Just to recap, um, the United States Secret Service had come into contact with her, being Heather Ann Tucci, and two other individuals when they showed up in Washington, D.C. It's my understanding and a request to meet with President Trump. I mean, what? How mind blowing. I, that the person that he entered into the system as a warrant or for a warrant gets picked up by the Secret Service uh, trying to meet with President Trump. Um, that is. That feels like a Hollywood script to me, guys. Uh, I I mean I I've heard, I've heard Heather's own words talking about visiting Trump, uh, or. That, that that was her intention so I mean I I don't have I don't have any reason to doubt that this was her intention this just uh, this is just very non-standard and what else did the Secret Service advise you as to the defendants whereabouts the Secret Service provided me hotel information and room number information that we immediately that following the next morning, I immediately provided to our Washington field office, who subsequently makes an arrest. And, and I want to pause here for a second. Uh, he got a call from the Secret Service. You know, the Secret Service, they're the ones that came into contact with Heather Ann Tucci. Uh, did, they, did they not check her for warrants right then and there? Like, how is it that the Secret Service let Heather Ann Tucci go? You see, when you get down and you actually read the verbiage of a warrant, it's basically a letter from a judge, and it's going out to any sworn law enforcement officer uh, under that judge's jurisdiction anywhere in the, in the country. And it says, you are hereby commanded to arrest, and then they give the name of the subject. So in this case, the arrest warrant would say, you are hereby commanded to arrest Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and bring her before me in whatever court it is uh, for uh, a hearing on the following charges. It doesn't say... You are hereby given the option of whether or not you're going to arrest Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. And let me tell you what. I have heard sergeants chew cops out, regular beat cops, because they came across somebody who had a warrant and they chose not to arrest them. They thought it was a too small of a warrant. Well, there's certain cases out there where someone with just a small $200 warrant for a traffic violation uh, was not arrested on that warrant and uh, let go and just told to take care of it and they went on and committed another crime. So all of this uh, rolled downhill to the point where sergeants are really admonishing and instructing the cops underneath of them that when they come across somebody who's got a warrant you take them in. Now there were times when I was working that uh, that I'm aware of that cops came across people with warrants and 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 didn't turn them in, uh, didn't arrest them. And you know the school of thought there was that uh, when you've got somebody with an active warrant out there, that's just a tool, and you can use that at any time to take them off the streets. And if they're not being disruptive or otherwise <clears throat> creating a need for them to be taken off the streets, to arrest them on a small warrant is to basically destroy a tool that you might use later on in your, in your policing, maybe later on in the week or the month. Wait for that guy to have a bad day and then take him in. That's kind of the... Uh, the thinking there. I've seen I've seen both schools of thought, but I have been specifically told 
by my superiors that if I ever come across somebody with a warrant, I am to take them in. I don't have a choice. So why is the Secret Service calling the FBI and telling the FBI where this, uh, where the subject of their warrant is? How come the Secret Service didn't arrest them? Even if the Secret Service checked her for a warrant after the fact and then found she had a warrant, that's a, a, a federal charge. It, it's listed as federal charge 999. You can't look up what that is. There's no entry for 999. It doesn't go up that high. But the, the command of that warrant to the Secret Service is to is to go arrest her so they should have arrested her or at a bare minimum if they were too busy they should have called the dc metro police and said hey we're aware of a subject with your warrant she's at this address we know that she's there now we need to pick her up but no they don't and parker still doesn't when, when he finds out about it he waits till the next morning and then calls the field office to go arrest him rather than call DC Metro Police, have them go pick her up, and then he can fly to, to Washington, D.C. to, to go handle uh, his case. But that doesn't happen. So this, this is very suspicious to me that there is so much delay between identifying somebody with a warrant and then actually serving that warrant's arrest, especially for a felony warrant. Everything federal, guys, is a felony. There are no federal misdemeanors. And were you personally involved in the arrest of the defendant? No, ma'am, I was not personally involved. How did you learn of the actual arrest? I learned of the actual arrest from our field office. They provided the information to myself, and once the other agents... The information came back to us in Knoxville, then an arrest had been taken place without incidents. Without incident. What? Uh, again, this, this guy is an FBI agent, a defense attorney, a prosecuting attorney, and a judge. And, he, and he's fumbling to answer the simple question of, oh, Agent Steele, how did you learn of the actual arrest? I learned of the actual arrest from our field office. They provided the information to myself and once the other agents, the information came back to us in Knoxville, then an arrest had been taken place without incident. I mean, this guy sounds like they pulled him right out of the projects in the inner city sometimes when he's testifying. I, I have a hard time believing that this guy was ever a judge. I cannot imagine a judge talking like this. I can't imagine a lawyer talking like this. It's hard for me to imagine an FBI agent talking like this. And were you advised of the details of the arrest? Yes, ma'am, we did receive some details of the arrest. It's my understanding from the information that we received from the Washington Field Office that Mr. Reef, Mrs. Tucci Giraffe, and what other individuals were staying in room 601. Uh, again, what kind of a sentence is this? Yes, ma'am, or what kind of an answer? Yes, ma'am, we received some details of the arrest. It's my understanding from the information that we received from the Washington field office that Mr. Reef, Miss Tucci Giraffe, and would other individuals were staying in room 61. <laughs> this coming from a lawyer judge cop? At the time the agents approached that room, Miss Tucci Giraffe was outside. One or more of the individuals was able to identify her from the window. Agents then radioed down to other agents, task force officers, and metropolitan police that were on the ground and an arrest was effectuated. <laughs> what? I have never, never heard a cop testify or talk like this.
much less a lawyer or a judge. This is, this is laughable. So I'd like to point out that he wasn't there, but yet he's describing what happened at a scene that he didn't take place in. Everything that he's getting is hearsay. And hearsay is being used to ultimately pin an identity on Heather Ann Tucci. And we don't even know who the fuck Parker Steele is. We don't know if he's S-T-E-I-L-L, S-T-I-L-L. Seems like he's got a lot of different jobs that are tied up in every part of the criminal justice system. And the court is taking his word on hearsay to the fact that uh, the details about her arrest when he wasn't there? What, are you are you just kidding me? What? This is the farthest departure from normal court criminal justice proceedings that I have ever seen. And no cop says effectuated. They might say we affected the arrest, but they don't say an arrest was effectuated. This is... Uh, I believe it's called a passive tense. An arrest was effectuated. No, you need to say subject or, you know, cop A arrested suspect A. Cop A affected the arrest of the suspect. An arrest was effectuated. It, you know, you don't, it never says who? It just says agents, field office. Mr. Reef? This doesn't even say who Mr. Reef is. Who are the names of these agents? How can you have an identity hearing that Heather Antucci Giraffe and her arrest to make sure that the right person was arrested when you don't have the actual people there that were arrested, that were arresting her. Do you guys get that? How can you possibly determine if the right person was arrested when you don't have the person there who made the fucking arrest? The only thing you have is somebody who is hundreds of miles away wasn't there, only heard hearsay, is not naming who he heard it from, and this is being admitted and relied on by this judge to identify Heather Ann Tucci. What the fuck? Other than your review of the criminal databases, your review of the videos of the defendant, what else did you do to verify that the person arrested here in the District of Columbia was also the same person that was arrested pursuant or the same person named in the indictment and the arrest warrant that was issued? Wow, what a very clear and direct question. Let's find out what, uh, what his answer is. Well, I think we really, you know, We've continued to continue to conduct course of interviews. We've continued investigation. We've continued to review video and we've also continued, so that's kind of our normal course. We've continued an effort to ensure that we've talked to everyone involved and have all the facts. What a fucking bullshit answer. This means nothing. If I said this on the stand, you can well believe that the attorney that asked me that, if, if this is the prosecution, which it was, say, Your Honor, a moment to confer with the witness, brief recess, and I'd get pulled aside and they'd say, Hey, Danny, what the fuck is wrong with you? Pull your head out of your ass. Answer the questions that they're asking you. 
seriously, I would be, I would be subject to, uh, to, to internal action for behaving like this. No, you, you say what you did. You don't say we continue to conduct a course of interviews. No, you say, I interviewed 15 people. Would you like to know their names now or would we get to that later? I watched six more videos, a total of 237 minutes. Here's those videos. Do you want to talk about those now or not? We've talked to everyone involved. How can you make a blanket statement like that? Gosh, when you're a cop on the stand, you are so careful about your language. Just say, we've put word out to the public and ask anyone who knows anything about this to come forward. Right now, we've talked to everyone that we're aware of, but you can't say we've talked to everyone involved and have all the facts. Holy fucking shit. That is not for him to declare. They, he obviously doesn't have all the facts. How the hell is this admitted in as, as solid testimony? And did there come a time where you requested fingerprint analysis for the defendant? Yes, ma'am, there was a time when I did request that. Absolutely. And to your, you know... She asked, what else did you do? He didn't even remember the fingerprint. She had to lead him into this. Oh, oh, well, did you do fingerprint analysis? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. What the fuck, guys? All of that stuff, like you'd have a list of all the things that you did to identify a subject if you were in an identity hearing. Wow. And to your knowledge, what agency conducted the fingerprint analysis? That would be the FBI, CEGIS. Uh, is that criminal justice information system, I wonder? Oh, he's going to say it. What does CEGIS stand for? <clears throat> I think it's the criminal justice information system, ma'am. And we just commonly refer to it as CEGIS, located in West Virginia. <laughs> oh, wow. And to your knowledge, based on your request for fingerprint analysis, was a report authored? Yes, ma'am, there was a report authored at my request. She is leading him. I want to point this out to you. She asks a very direct question up here. Other than your review of the criminal database, your review of the videos of the defendant, what else did you do to verify that the person arrested here in the District of Columbia was the same person that was arrested pursuant or the same person named in the indictment and the arrest warrant that was issued? He doesn't answer that. The very next question is, oh, well, did there come a time where you requested fingerprint analysis for the defendant? Because none of this here in his answer supports the or answers the question that was posed to him. So, Ms. Walters, the U.S. attorney, is leading the witness here. He doesn't answer the question, so she's throwing the ideas out, and he's like, oh, yeah, absolutely, you're right, that was it. And then he's able to remember that, oh, oh, well, it's Sejus that does the fingerprint stuff. And to your knowledge, based on your request for fingerprint analysis, was a report authored? Oh, yes, there was a report that was authored at my request. It's exactly verbatim. The question just turned back into a statement. This, this is leading the witness. I'm showing you government exhibit number four which also has been previously provided to the defendant. Do you recognize it? Yes, ma'am, I do recognize this report. And what is it specifically? Well, as you note on here, it says, quote, 
Request Procedure Special Special Agent Parker H. Steele. Wow. That's really important that his H is right there because in, in my last video, uh, I found a Parker H. Steele in the legal directory in Knoxville, Tennessee. So this is, this is very interesting that we got an H here and it's an H period. I wonder what the full middle name is. Wow, mind blowing. We need to, we need to dig that up too. Dated July 27, 2017. This is what I would refer to as like a biometric report and a fingerprint report that we request one of our biometric individuals at CGIS perform a fingerprint check. <laughs> Again, wow, this guy cannot talk. He sounds very uneducated. He sounds like he's reciting a script and he's not quite getting it all right. So what we have from a prior arrest of Miss Tucci Giraffe and we look at those fingerprints and in the prints that were most recently obtained when she was arrested and the subject of this proceeding here today. Wow. Let me read that again. So we have from a prior arrest of Ms. Tucci and we look at those fingerprints and in the prints that were most recently obtained when she was arrested and the subject of this proceeding here today. How hard is it guys to say as part of a fingerprint check we have two sets of fingerprints. One set of fingerprints was from her arrest in Washington, D.C. One set of fingerprints was from a prior arrest from such and such a date by such and such a department. When comparing the fingerprints from both of these arrests, the fingerprint examiners have determined that both sets of prints match identically. And they say so in the attached report. <sighs> That's how, that's how testimony goes. This is not testimony, people. This is gobbledygook. It's simply a comparison. You've got two sets of fingerprints, and now they're going to do an analysis in order to determine that this is one and the same individual. Wow, this, this makes it sound like it's predetermined. So once they've got two sets of finger, fingerprints, they're going to do an analysis, and why? In order to determine that this is one and the same individual. Wow, no. That's not what the analysis is to determine. The analysis is to make a comparison and to note any similarities or differences. And then based on the similarities and differences, you will make a determination of whether or not they are the same individual. He's jumping right to the gun. And anybody, like, you... Uh, how many times would I have pulled him off the stand? I, I, I would, if I was the U.S. attorney, I would think twice about proceeding forward with this case based on this, this witness. Is this the main witness for the government? When I was working and had a lot of dealings with the district attorney... Once the district attorney got to know you a little bit, uh, you, you soon got to find out uh, what he thought of your report writing, your testimony, and you might find yourself going to court an awful lot and testifying in full-blown trials because you can write great reports, you can do great investigations, and there's the meat here that we need to win in trial. And these district attorneys are so overworked that a big portion of how they get through their case file is to all the new cases that come in, they take a look and see who's the investigating officer. Oh, investigating officer is Charles Smith, 
I like Charles Smith. I like the way he investigates. I like the way he writes. He's complete. He's been educated. He's got a head on his shoulders. Yeah. But this one over here by Mike Smith, he doesn't know his he doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. I, I just I dismiss everything. I, I refuse to prosecute anything that comes across my desk from him. Like this stuff goes on and and I find it so hard to believe that this guy has made it this far. He's made it as a defense attorney, as a prosecuting attorney, as a judge, and an FBI agent? No. <clears throat> I, I, I don't buy that at all. This guy, this guy doesn't understand the process. Wow. And what specifically was the conclusion in the report, which is government exhibit number four? I'll draw attention to page five where it says, result of examination. The fingerprints present on the standards referenced above is S1 and S2. That's what I previously discussed are the fingerprints of one and the same individual. And also noted on here, Ms. Coulter, Mr. Coulter notes that as a quality assurance measure, a second fingerprint examiner conducted an independent examination and reached the same conclusion. Which fingerprint examiner? There are two here. Two fingerprint examiners looked at this. What are their names? You're testifying in court. This is what you're using? to prove the identity of Heather Ann Tucci. You can't even identify yourself. We don't know who you are. You're not identifying the fingerprint examiners. Who is Mr. Coulter? Is he the examiner? It's just somebody who's noting that there's a quality assurance measure that there's two fingerprint examiners that reach the same conclusion. Who are they? Why isn't he telling them who they are? It should be right there on the sheet. That needs to be read into the record. It's Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe's right to question every step of this chain of custody around her identity and around this investigation. And that's not happening. This has the feel that the FBI agent here is somebody who's just watched a lot of Hollywood on uh, about courtrooms. And he's trying to hold that energy, but wow, if you're in the know, this guy doesn't pass the sniff test. And so that particular line references S1 and S2. Can you tell us what S1 and S2 are and who they relate to? Yes, ma'am. I just go right to S1. As you will note on here, you see the last name, Heather Antucci Giraffe. You have a date of birth on there, and this one would be from the Metropolitan Police Department, is actually referenced on the bottom right. It says DC Metro Police 727 2017 940, approximately 940. How can you tell us what the date of birth is? Oh, sorry. And can you tell us what the date of birth that is listed on that particular portion of the exhibit? Yes, ma'am, this references date of birth as 7-30-1972, and also an identifying social security number is also in here. And you mentioned S2 as also a part of the exhibit. Can you explain to us what is contained in that exhibit? Yes, S2 is prints that were provided to us by the authorities in Washington State and this again, you see two names on this. You see Heather Ann Tucci and then Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Also date of birth 7-30-1972 is also referenced on this document. You'll see their state identification code on there as well. Gosh, this... This guy sounds like a high school dropout who's trying to, uh, trying to snow the world. All of this should have come right out without being led by, by questions. And is government exhibit number four a fair and accurate copy of the report you received from the FBI on or about July 28, 2017, 
in relation to your request for fingerprint analysis. Wow. So Heather was arrested on the 27th. And this report was the very next day. Oh, what? Less than 24 hour turnaround time for fingerprint analysis on a nonviolent crime? What? This is outer fucking limits, guys. Holy cow. This is very non standard. Heather was arrested on the 27th of July. On the 28th, The, the fingerprint analysis came in less than 24 hours later? Impossible. When I was a cop, fingerprint analysis took weeks, months, and they're only going to do it for a high priority case. They've got a mountain of homicides and violent crimes that are already generated. People are already waiting for analysis on that. That shit's important. How does a, a case that's not thoroughly investigated, nonviolent, get a fingerprint analysis return in less than 24 hours? Bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. Right here, page 45, line 9. Wow. And we can see up here, page 44, line 14, that's when the arrest was. 9.40 on the 27th. And then on the 28th, the fucking fingerprint analysis is done? No way. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. At this time, the government wishes to admit and publish government exhibit number four to the court. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Bose, are your objections the same? Yes. The government exhibit four will be admitted over objection and the government exhibits number four admitted into evidence. Mr. Bose, uh, he's objecting, but He's just being uh, proceeded right over his objections. Uh, he doesn't remember. He's an officer of the court, and he's really limited in into what he can do. He can object, but he can't make the judge see his objections, and, and that's what's going on here. Uh, I saw some comments from people uh, really bashing on on Bose and and I think that yeah his attention to detail wasn't where it should have been I have a feeling he was just in a in an autopilot for an identity hearing phase and had no idea the true nature of the beast that he was really getting wrapped up in and I think he's got a better idea of that now but I don't know if we're gonna see Mr. Bose again Mr. Bose is out of uh, Washington DC I don't know if he's going to be the one that goes to Knoxville to continue to uh, represent Heather Ann Tucci. I have a feeling that he was appointed a uh, court appointed attorney for Heather Ann Tucci for the identity hearing because he was in Washington, D.C. That's my read on that. I'm not sure if Mr. Bose is going to continue on. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. No further questions for the witness from the government, Your Honor. The court, thank you very much, Ms. Walters. Mr. Bose, you may cross-examine. I um, ask for permission to speak with Ms. Tucci. Bear with me, please, while I confer with the deputy clerk. There's a discussion held off the record. We will recess this matter briefly and take another matter that will give you an opportunity to confer, Mr. Bose, and prepare for cross-examination. Ms. Tucci Giraffe, please return with the marshal. Discussion is held off record. Agent Steele, you may step down, sir. Thank you. Recess taken. Coming back from recess, it's interesting that uh, that.
that missed oh okay we got deputy clerk down here usually the deputy clerk's going to be the first person to talk after recess so uh here we got the judge mr bose do you need additional time no we're ready your honor agent Steele, thank you please take your seat the witness resumes the witness stand deputy clerk says recalling criminal case 17-531 United States of America v. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Now, Mr. Bose, I understand that you're ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. I will note that it is now approximately five minutes after 12. We will proceed for 15 minutes or so and then recess, recess for lunch and resume at 1.30. So right here, the the judge is, is already telling him that he's only got 15 minutes uh, and then they're going to take a break. <clears throat> well, Your Honor, I believe that my examination will be relatively short. Very well. So cross-examination of Agent Steele by Mr. Bose. Agent Steele, you testified that, you, that you've been an FBI agent for how many years? Approximately five, sir. Sorry, sir. Case came in as a new agent. Or, sir. Hold on. Approximately five, sir. Sorry, sir. Came in as a new agent in 2012. <clears throat> How many investigations have you been involved with during that time? It's hard to say, sir. Approximately 10 and maybe more. We have a small office and we assist each other in a lot of different investigations. He's worked on 10 investigations in five years. He's worked on two investigations per year? Are you fucking kidding me? That doesn't sound right at all. That has got to be the easiest, lightest caseload that I've ever heard of. If my caseload was 10 cases per year, I would know them all like the back of my hand and I wouldn't fumble it all on the stand. Wow, that doesn't make any sense to the way he's testifying here today. Okay, would it be fair to say that you're the lead investigator in connection with this case? I think I am, yes sir. Wow, either you know you're the lead investigator or you don't, because there are certain responsibilities that a lead investigator has relative to just some other cop or agent who's just going to be supporting your investigation. I think I am? No, it's either, yes, this is my case, or no, this is agent so-and-so's case, but I've worked with him from the start. It might as well be mine, but the official lead investigator is so-and-so. I think I am, yes, sir. Okay, now you've testified that you have reviewed some social media videos that purportedly show Ms. Tucci. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. And prior to the events that give rise to the indictment, had you had any contact with Ms. Tucci before then? Yes, sir, I had. When did you have your prior contact with Ms. Tucci? It was, I recall it was a Friday night. I apologize that I don't recall the exact date. Fucking bullshit. If he had contact with a suspect, it would be written down in his notes and there would be a date and a time and a total duration of that phone call. If not, have a recording. Are you fucking kidding me? He doesn't recall the exact date? Bullshit. I'm going to guess approximately July 14th, 15th. I believe that's provided in the 302 of the exact date, sir, where myself and another agent attempted to call Miss Tucci Giraffe on a phone number that was provided to us at the arrest scene with a piece of paper that said Heather and provided a 253 area code, I believe, sir. Uh, I believe? He's not sure? This answer doesn't make any sense. I'm going to guess approximately 
You don't guess when you're on the stand. This is about truth. Guessing is not truth. Was he sworn in? We don't know what the deputy clerk uh, admonished him as far as the swearing in ceremony because Barbara DeVico didn't include that in this transcript. Thanks, Barbara. I don't know what he means here when he says, I'm going to guess approximately July 14, 15. I believe that's provided in the 302 of the exact date, sir, where myself and another agent attempted to call Miss Tucci Giraffe. W what does this mean? How come Bose is not asking him what this shit means? 302, is a 302 a form? I never testified to what I guessed. I, I would say, I don't recall right now, but I'm sure if I review my notes, I can give you an accurate answer. May I review my notes, please? That's how you handle this. You don't, you don't offer a bunch of gibberish that you call a guess. You say you believe that's what it is. This is not good testimony at all, people. It's not reliable. You can't do shit with this. So the contact that you had wasn't visual contact. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. You spoke to an individual on the other line of the phone that you assumed was Miss Tucci. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Right. I did not have visual contact with her. Yes, sir. And prior to that phone call, you had no contact whatsoever with Miss Tucci. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Just to clarify for the record at the scene, at the arrest scene, they referenced a lady by the same name of Heather on the telephone, but I had no contact with her at the scene. Here again, he's testifying about something that happened at the arrest at which he's not present. This is garbage. Okay, in the co-defendant's case, Mr. Bean, were you present at the time of his arrest? I was, sir. And Miss Tucci wasn't there, is that correct? No, sir, she was not present at the scene. Now, you testified that you received notification of Miss Tucci's arrest. Strike that. You were not present when Miss Tucci was arrested in this case. No, sir, I was not. In fact, isn't it true that Miss Tucci was arrested in Washington, D.C., and you were in Knoxville at the time that the arrest occurred? Is that correct? That is absolutely true, sir. In fact, isn't it true that the very first time that you ever saw Miss Tucci was in this courtroom. Is that correct? Well, I would just say, sir, I saw her by the evidence that I already looked at. I seen her on video. I seen photographs of her. The first time I saw her in person was on Monday of this week, correct? That's correct, sir. <laughs> this is mind blowing. The very first time that he saw her in person was in court. She was the only one who was wearing orange and in the defendant's seat. Obviously, the one he's going to pick as Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. This whole identification process has flaws all the way through it. In the academy, you learn that you need to do... Uh, you need to do a, like six similar photos together, show them to somebody, and they have to pick the suspect out of six different people that all kind of look similar. The only time that you can just bring one person who might be the suspect is if there's, say, a robbery and it just happened, and the guy's wearing a red shirt and blue shorts, and a cop finds a guy wearing red shirt and blue shorts running away from the scene, and he stops him. Well, you can't take that guy anywhere just yet. You can't, put, uh, you can't arrest him yet. But what you can do is you can take the, vic the victim and witnesses to the spot where you found that suspect, and you do what's called an infield show-up. And they look at that guy and they say either that's the guy who just robbed me five minutes ago or that's no, that's not him. That's the only time when you would present one person to somebody 
and ask is this and ask them to identify is this the person all the rest you've got to do your due diligence to make sure that you're not leading somebody that you're not uh, you're not sabotaging someone into uh, being identified Now you testified that when you saw some video that you saw some videos that purportedly show Miss Tucci. Do you remember that testimony? I do. Were you present when those how many videos did you see? There's numerous videos, sir. Again, he would if he's got videos admitted into evidence, he's going to know the exact number and he'll say, "Well, there's a lot online. I downloaded and copied 14 and and I I stopped there but there's more out there you don't just say there's numerous I just want you to know I don't want to speculate and I'm going to say at this point maybe I've seen four approximately four videos bullshit if he's doing an investigation he knows exactly how many videos he's seen because he's written down the date he found it, the link he found it at, he's written down everything about that video. I mean, come on, he's got notes on that. He knows how many he's seen. To make a guess, I don't want to speculate. He's saying he doesn't know, and he's not asking to refer to his notes. And the defense attorney's not saying, oh, well, would you like to refer to your notes? Neither is the prosecuting attorney. Neither is the fucking judge. Where is the courtroom decorum for justice here? I don't see it. If anybody sees anything that resembles that, let me know. I'd be really interested to see that. Okay, and those videos you present when the first video is made? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I misread that. Okay, and those videos, were you present when the first video was made? No, sir, I was not present when any of those videos were made. You anticipated my next question. A and again, we've been trained that uh, we only answer the question that's asked to us. We don't go answering anything else. And this guy, as a cop, a lawyer, and a judge, would definitely fucking know that. You anticipated my next question. So the second, third, and fourth, you were not present, correct? No, sir. And again, that's an approximate number. And you can't even tell us when those videos were made, is that correct? So that's the end of page 50. Wow. Just to recap here, let's go up to where we find it. Gotta look at the fingerprint report where it actually shows Parker H. Steele Did I just pass it? Well, we've got a Parker H. Steele listed on the fingerprint analysis right here, line 9 of page 43. Request Procedure Special Agent Parker H. Steele dated 727-2017. We're going to open up uh, another window here. Wow, what's that? Uh, I guess we're not. My computer's crashing, or at least the browser just crashed, so we're just going to call it off right here. We'll talk about Parker H. Steele some more. Go check out the previous video I did uh, talking about no separation of powers. Parker H. Steele, a cop, a lawyer, and a judge. Uh, it's, it's just Parker Steele, but I didn't know that I found a Parker H. Still without the E. So, uh, and he's a lawyer in Knoxville, so this is a big finding here that Parker H. Steele is showing up in the identity hearing transcript. I think we got the right person. Alrighty, more next time.